keep doing this, I think you're pointing at me. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome back to Two Nerds, One Quest. I am your host, Dan DM, JC Dittmer, here with these four nerds because we are like gremlins. Oh, that man in the Milwaukee shirt and the green fedora is one Ryan Crixus Kukta playing Lady Sil this morning. How you doing, buddy? Doing, doing the Kevin, Kevin McAllister. <laughs> That's how I would feel if I didn't have this amazing group behind me, uh, because Lady Sill has had a really hard time staying upright. But I, things are moving up. Level two, yeah, we got a new outlook on life. Excellent, excellent. And then that man went to Mike on the ones and twos, and I don't know what shirt he's wearing today. <laughs> it is one Tom M. Norman? What the hell is that? Hey, it's a Brewer shirt too. Hey. Okay, you guys went that direction. I went, Hold I went it down. Yeah. Went this direction. <clears throat> it was either that or wear my Aaron Rodgers jersey. I yeah. didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. You know. You didn't want to limp around all day. I didn't want to tear my ACL or my Achilles. You know. Achilles, yeah. Whatever it is, I didn't want to do that today. So you know, I figured I'd be safe. And then the man in the gray Adidas to go with the gray hair. <laughs> White, 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 white. It's not even gray anymore. It's just it's white at this point. <laughs> One Rick Kane Lefave. How are you doing, buddy? Good morning. Yeah, I, I ditched the Packer shirt because obviously the uh, good luck didn't work last week. So it was only it's only weird if it works and if it doesn't work and it because it was work. washed. I'm I'm trying a jersey for the first time this year, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Well, at least he can't get hurt. Well, he it, can, but it won't matter. Can. <laughs> it doesn't matter, and we don't care. <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. exactly. And last but not least, the Limerick Maker, the Lore Master, the Lazy Dragon, the Lovable Lug. <laughs> I, got, I got that in there now. <laughs> I call you a Lovable Lug, but you're probably the smartest one out of us. You are Rick. <laughs> actually, I love playing all, the Lovable all you, Lug. All you would actually intimidate me. <laughs> Intelligence wise, which is scary to have your four players be intimidating that way. Anyways, Jeff, Doc Williams, Doc Williams? No, Jeff Crew, J Crew, no, G Crew, dang it. Mm. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? G, G Crew works. G, G, crew. Uh, G crew, doing well. A little, little tired, long day yesterday. Lots of sun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it was, uh, it was good. It was a good day. Too much candy. Too much candy. There's, I don't know that there is such a thing. Sugar, sugar hangover. Sugar hangover. Yes, those exist. <laughs> Too much candy. I do not know. Mm. Do you have a recap? And maybe that one of those limericks we were talking I about. I do. I do. I do. So uh, we started um, out in the gauntlet at night, yeah. uh, starting with a battle against two maggots that were eating a frog. Uh, we fought those maggots, and then while investigating the room in the frog, we heard a buzzing from the door to the southwest, which turned out to be one fly and then another fly, which we had to deal with. Uh, so then Syl was uh, doing some healing while Abed and Kane started adventuring again. Um, they actually went outside through the wall and saw uh, there was a dock and, and what appeared to be a boathouse. Um, and then uh, Abed got a little confused by a wisp and fell in the water. So uh, Lady Sill said, why don't we try the bridge instead? And uh, we went that way, but the door was locked. So we walked around the outside of the building to find another door and uh, uh, ended up finding that we, uh, we ended up in a workshop, what appeared to be a workshop for the lighthouse with lenses and things. And there was a, a bird construct that attacked and we had to deal with it, and uh, pretty sure it's in pieces now. So, uh, when Abed saw lights on the pier, he decided he had to get near. But off of the dock, he fell like a rock and got soaked right up to his rear. <laughs> nice. Nailed it. Yeah. I got wet. Yeah. 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 So the spot I marked in green is a set of double doors. I know we didn't have Dumbledore. any sort of them. Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore. Double doors. Double doors. So you stand amongst the ruins of 
a old, uh, what looks like an old workshop. In the middle of this workshop, uh, standing on a on a pedestal, is a um, looks like a um, sight glass, spyglass, telescope <laughs> looking thing. As a uh, former sailor, I think I would be interested in checking out that spyglass. <laughs> Check out the spyglass, and it's a spyglass. <laughs> Uh, I suppose it's dark. I was looking through it. It's dark at the other end. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's nighttime. He's um, got caps on. Yep. Mm, that too. Um, it is a very. It's bejeweled. It's it's got gems actually around it. It is a very like, in all your times on ships, they've all been functional spyglasses. This one seems almost as decorative as it is functional. When you do end up getting the spy, uh, the end off the cap and looking through it, out the door, mm -hmm. you can. Uh, it's it's a very good one. Um, and yeah, it's looking at it. Uh, make make a. I don't know knowledge a knowledge check. Knowledge. I will do that. Uh, does it count as sailing lore? Sure, yes. Knowledge sailing lore. Um, and then we thing? forgot to talk about our characters up, up Oh, yes, we did. Now. Yes, we did. We can talk about them a little bit here. Uh, it's a 15 for a sailing 15. lore. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, you're estimating, like I said, you've never seen one this um, functional or this uh, decorative before. Mm -hmm. You're estimating this is worth probably about 20 gold. Nice. Um, I would definitely uh, hold it out for the uh, magical crews, or well, I'm the crew, but the magical uh, people <laughs> to uh, see if there's anything special about That's it from a not gonna get old. <laughs> no, from an arcane standpoint. I would love to ping and uh, see you... if uh, there's anything magical in this room. Yeah, uh, let's see. You you ping and the. Mm... The thing that actually pings that you get a, a resonance off of is not the spyglass, but the doll. The the yeah. bird doll thing. That would make sense to me. Um, it's faint, though. Like, whatever you did to it in fighting it has drastically reduced its magical essence. All right. So give me one second here, gentlemen. Um, Lady, Lady Sill is going to say, crew, if you don't mind... Let me see that beautiful uh, spyglass for one moment. Lady Sill, uh, in moving to late level two, uh, just improved her healing capacity with healing hands. But she also picked up, uh, as we go through this particular lighthouse, um, she picked up an ability to uh, kind of feel... Uh, kind of around with the information and, and with the, the things that are around here, the resonance of the former owner of these items. So I do have an ability now um, that's uh, psychological resonance. Ooh. And um, what that allows me to do, uh, or sorry, read psychometric resonance. What that allows me to do is kind of connect with an item and if there was a former owner or possessor that had a particular, particularly strong impression left on that item, I can pick it up and even see the former owner's face. So okay. in this case, for example, if you know we find a dead soldier or something, um, if his sword is there, I could probably feel the fear he felt in the last moments of his life and something like that so um i was i would like to hold the spyglass and see if there's any um information that can be gleaned off of that that's really Kuka, cool what's the name of the ability i'm just curious what's that what's the name of the ability it's read psychometric resonant that's awesome <clears throat> 
So that's cool. Does it take an action to do? Yeah. Uh, at one minute. One minute. Okay. Oh. So well, um, well, Lady Sill is spending a minute looking at this bejeweled spyglass crew. You want to tell us how um, how you got better over the last <laughs> between sure. now and <laughs> sure. I uh, I went with um, with kind of the uh, the thievery trap finding. Um, sweet so uh rogues get a rogue feat a skill feat and a skill increase so the skill increase i went with thievery to get become an expert in thievery um and then i chose for my rogue feat trap finder uh, i have an intuitive intuitive sense that alerts me to the dangers and presence of traps giving me a plus one circumstance bonus to perception checks to find traps uh to ac against attacks made by traps and to saves against traps and even if I'm not searching, I get a, a check to find traps that normally require me to be searching, um, but still need to meet any other requirements to find it. And then I can uh, disable traps that require a, a rank of master in thievery, even though I'm only an expert. And it gets better as my ability goes, as my uh, expertise goes up. And then for my... Um, Skill feat, I went with wary disarmament, also related to traps. If I trigger a device or set off a trap while disarming it, I get a plus two circumstance bonus to AC or saving throw. Um, but it only counts to effects related to the failed attempts, not not related to later ones, such as additional later attacks or things. So uh, I went with... Uh, Finding traps, which I think kind of fit into crew. You know, he was casual about a lot of things, and now he can add finding traps to his. You know, even okay. when he's not actually searching, he has a chance to find them. Cool. So, plus that extra ten hit points doesn't hurt at all. Nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to ask, we okay. we don't go to max hit points when we level up. We have to wait until we rest, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, cool. Uh, Kane, would you like to describe how you are more powerful? Car. Yeah. <laughs> Kane's uh, upgrades are pretty simple. Um, the first one is lunge, which allows me to do a strike from five additional feet away. So he can do an attack from fifteen feet out now with his meteor hammer. It does not increase my threat range to 15 feet. I still I still threaten just 10 feet. It is specific to the strike that I'm using it on. So it's just a one-time strike or if I can use it on my second strike. Um, so, but if I, if I use it to strike something 15 feet away, then that thing has to walk through my threat range to get to me and I can get an AO on it. That's kind of the benefit of it. Um, and then the skill feed he took was Titan Wrestler and that just allows him to trip or um, grapple, trip grapple, or put, shove anything two sizes larger than him. The normal rules allow only for one size larger. So, do you have a finishing move if you're a wrestler? <laughs> if I'm a tiny, <laughs> I have to come up with one. <laughs> no, you, and if is that if when at at some point if my athletics get to legendary status, then I can trip and do all that stuff. Things th two set or uh, three sizes larger, so it grows as he gets stronger. I don't know if we'll reach that high level. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, last but not least, um, Mr. <clears throat> Abed and Troy. Yes. I don't know if Troy gets anything, but Abed would. I, th I thought about doing some familiar stuff. Um, I ended up picking for my skill feat quick identification. You can identify magic swiftly. You take only one minute when using identify magic to determine the properties of an item, ongoing effect, or location, rather than 10 minutes. If you're a master, it takes a three action activity. If you're a legendary, it takes one action. I am neither of those. So basically, I'm able to identify magic stuff faster, be more precise, etc., etc. And then for my wizard feat, I chose a cantrip expansion. Uh, dedicated study allows you to prepare a wider range of simple spells. You can prepare two additional cantrips each day. So that uh, I, f I figured at this low level, having two extra cantrips 
would be probably most useful. Um, and it's what I would do. I'm I'm looking for for power. So if I can expand my spell book to give me that power, then I would do that. And I also got an extra level one spell slot. So that was cool. Okay. Um, while you are sitting there um, and <clears throat> waiting for Lady Cell to look at this spyglass and do this ability, you're thumbing through your, um, your potions that you got and looking at these things. Um, you can make an identify check on both of them. Yeah, I was. That's literally what I was going to ask. Is uh, while she's yep, doing it that, takes takes ten minutes as well to identify something. You can identify one of them. Actually, I believe I told you what one of them was because you knew because you had interacted with one before. Oh, what well, did you? The one on your belt is a healing potion, and that's why you put it on your belt. Oh, that's right. All right. So, what was it? The uh, uh, identify. Um, so I need a um. Do, 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 uh, it should be in your actions. It is not my actions. It, no, well, hang on, because it's going to be an arcana nature, occultism, <clears throat> or religion check. I just got to figure out which one. Check uh, actions for um, exploration, not. Um... I'm actually, I believe it's going to be arcana. If I remember correctly. Because I know where you got it. I'd be able to tell you, but my internet is slow this morning. <clears throat> Oh, here it is. Like, where the hell is it? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be Arcana. I'm good at these. Yeah. 17. 17, yeah. Uh, at the end of the 10 minutes, you realize that this is a... Uh, where is it again? It is a lesser dark vision elixir. Will help you see in the dark to some extent. And that healing was lesser as well? I believe so, yes. Uh, where is that again? 25. Doo, doo, doo. My daughter's alarm's going off in her bedroom. <laughs> Yeah, they are. That's good. Yeah, it's kind of a soft alarm when the door's closed. Um, yeah, a minor healing potion. Okay, a minor called minor minor healing potion. It only heals kids. Yes. Okay. Good seven, or people with, seven dwarves. Or I was gonna say, or people with the mentality of a kid. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm looking at you, so, genius. So it'll work for you. So it'll work for you guys. <laughs> um, Lady Cell, at the end of 10 minutes, you go on a journey, pretty much. You see at first the face of a elderly drow that looks happy at first then sad, then distraught and dirty, and slowly the inside below the surface of his skin starts pushing out and the face malforms and shape shifts and twists. And the last thing you see is the face of like a worm with like buggy eyes and a circular mouth with many teeth. And then it fades away. Yikes. Uh, Lady Sill nearly uh, stumbles over, you know, trying to understand this, this like resonance that she had with this item and gives it back to crew. Although it seems very ornate and beautiful, it's not magical like she's looking for and she doesn't want any part of it. In fact, she wants less a part of it now that she had that resonance with it than she did before, huh? Yep. 
All right. All right. Crew will throw it in his backpack, and it's probably too long. So unless it collapses, it would be sticking out the top. Um. It, yeah. And you can get it in there, but you can tell it's in there. It's one of those things where you got to kind of shove it in. You can get it closed, but it's like yeah. so it's, up against the side of the bag. So there's kind of a bulge. Yeah, there's a little bit of a bulge. Yeah. Okay. The long cylindrical thing making a bulge in your bag. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, show anything title, else? Show title. Show title. Show title. Yeah. <laughs> you said there was uh, another the the bird. Had yeah, the bird. magic the, yeah. fading, you, maybe. You go look at the bird, and on the back of the bird, there is a gem. Um, it is a uh, um, it, looking at it. You, like you don't know what it is. You don't. You don't do magic stuff. But it like pulses just gently. It's this purple gem that just. It's just slowly pulsing. It almost reminds you of the gauntlet a little bit. Mm, yeah, I would definitely. Right. No, knowing the uh, demeanor of Abed and uh, Lady Phil, I would definitely hold it out in my hand and see which one of them takes it first. Because it's not a normal gem. And this is what pinged slight magic to you, Lady Phil. So I don't know if that's motivation for you to try and grab it before Abed did, or if you guys are going to fight over it, or what's going to happen here. Um, I would. I don't know what Abed's doing right now. Abed I'm, just stood up. He he really he put a potion back in his backpack and stood up. Yeah, I I would not have seen. I would have been focused on the elixir and uh, doing that. So whatever you yeah. guys are doing is what you're doing. So if you take it, you okay. take it. So, since I pinged on it, then I would I would know that it exists. And after crew goes to fetch it. Lady Sill would have went like this, like, yeah, obviously bring it here. <laughs> uh, can you run a um, knowledge of occultism? Check yeah. for me. Did you yell, get over here? Over <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, good as I get. It's 24 for me. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, look at it. You, you don't even need the full 10 minutes to identify this thing. You realize this is a soul gem. Uh, it's a soul focus gem. It, um, these, what it was inside of, and what you fought was a um, uh, uh, soul bound doll. So there was a soul bound to this doll, and that was the sentience and the, the questioning about uh, Master. Um, what was his last name? Master Azrene, I think. Yeah. We'll go with that. So that, that reference and that little bit of it. And you can notice as it's pulsing in your hand, it's getting dimmer and dimmer. And you imagine in the next five minutes or so, it's just going to completely snuff out and you'll be left with a gem that would be worth probably about five gold based on your knowledge of the uh, cult, how that works and trying to infuse one of those. Okay. Um... And so it seems like it was imbued with power, and it isn't power itself. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, I'm going to just say that, like, uh, in moments, in moments it'll be worthless, but uh, I'll hold on to this just in case. And then right into our coin purse. Ta-da! You are five gold richer. Kind of. All right. We are free to move about the workshop. Kind of. Um, it's difficult terrain, and if you fall, you're going to take a point of damage. So be mm. careful. <laughs> so there's turbulence. Uh, shattered glass all over the place. <laughs> the whole the whole workshop, now that you're looking around it and you're free to move about, the whole workshop was absolutely destroyed by something. And whatever destroyed it, left that spyglass perfectly stock still standing in the middle of the room did not touch it. it like it it seems like there was some value to it like some personal value to it for some reason it didn't it did not ping as magical though right no it did not ping as magical 
That would be an interesting way for someone to spy on an uh, unwilling party to put some sort of sight spell on a spyglass. Spyglass, mm. give me sight beyond sight. <laughs> that they could watch us through the spyglass. It would be funny. All right. Uh, the green circle, that's a door. It's a double yeah. door that's closed. Yep, it's a double door that's closed. All right. I would go check it for traps. I would slowly make my way and check okay. it for traps. Make a thievery check for me. Uh, this is a plus 10 on this one. So, uh, <laughs> natural 20 plus 10 is 30. Do you believe this door is not trapped? <laughs> I believe I believe this door is not trapped. Uh, I will make an attempt to open it or see if it's locked. Uh, you turn the knob and it opens. Hmm. The one door the one door opens. The other door is like stuck fast. Okay. I, I will open the one door. Do Just unlock and, both doors. Well, you realizing yeah. it, you realize there's latches to hold the one door shut and they've been flipped to hold it shut. And you can yeah. actually flip them. Like, if you look at it a little bit, you'll realize it's one of those doors. Uh, I'll look back at Kane and be like, yeah, he's not going to fit. And I'll, Oh, wait. Is there a, a latch at the top of the door? Yes. Yeah. I can't reach that. So uh, <laughs> There's one at the bottom. You can throw the uh, bottom one, but you I'll try to push the it and the door wiggles on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I'll throw the bottom latch, and then I'll uh, just take a step through and see. Can you make an athletic? I was going to say, did you want to make an athletics check to try and jump and get the top latch? <laughs> Um, nah, nah. Okay. There's taller people who can take care of that. Okay. The, it, don't make me no. Never mind. I got my ass through. It's up to you guys to do the rest. <laughs> uh, crew. The first okay. thing you see stepping through here is a massive portrait on that long wall, yeah. or actually on the on the wall next to you. Actually, there's two portraits, opposite sides of the little hallway area, and on the two walls. The one you're standing closer to, the wall you're standing closer to, is like a three foot by four foot portrait that has just been absolutely shredded to pieces. Mm. Like you can't even make out what is on what the picture was supposed to be of. Um, but at the base of it, in on a little plaque, it says the artist at work. Mm. If you turn around and look on the wall behind you, there's a small ovular portrait, maybe two feet by one foot, of a smirking woman in a red dress with a high collar that says the Lady of Light on a plaque below it. And below that in the stone, there's something scrawled in... What languages does everyone speak? Oh, Jesus. I have common, dwarven, gnomish, and sylvan. If common and undercommon. Okay. Elven, goblin, sylvan, and common. Okay. Uh, common, demonic, elven, goblin, orcish, shadow tongue. Okay. Yeah, not in the language any one of you knows. Oh, Jesus. But there's <laughs> something scrawled underneath it. It's, it's an obscure-ass language. Like, I had to look up that it was actually a language. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. It's in English. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. For French, England, you speak of. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, other than just kind of looking to see if there's any hidden uh, switches, traps, compartments, um, I, they're really not interesting to me, probably. Yeah. I'm not going to try hauling a painting back to sure. sell. Clearly. Um, so I would just kind of continue on to the corner and okay. hope that they're following. Kane is, apparently. Kane, I'll you see this. I'll take care of the latch on the door and move through. Okay. You see the shredded portrait on the left hand side and the one of the lady on the right hand side. Okay. Now, do we have, I think I have dim, dim vision. What is it called? Low light vision. Does that, do we have other? Otherwise, do we have torches or anything going? I have an ever burning assume... torch. Yeah, there's an ever burning torch. Um, you didn't. Okay. Weren't you doing like lights, dancing lights, or something? 
I bet. At one Somebody point, was doing yeah, uh, like your, flame in hand. Oh, I like had flame my, in hand. Yet. Yeah, I had flame in hand. Did you get? I thought you did. You give the ever burning torch to Kane? No. How did that work? I forget. No. I did no. not have an ever burning torch. I had it stuck in my po I had it stuck in my backpack, burning, as we were going. Okay. Which, when you I put the have... when I, when I put the flame in hand, I forgot I had that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got some light. Yeah, there is there is some light flickering here. All right, um, peek around the corner. Peek around the corner. Uh, there is a set of double doors. Huh, double doors. Another set of double doors right here. <laughs> we. Jesus. All right. I drive. <laughs> I, I drive. I draw poorly. Um. You see another set of double doors there. Uh, as you peek around the corner, there's a click like the door had just closed. Um, oh, that's interesting. To the north of you is a painting, a seven foot by seven foot painting of a city. Um, and to the south of you, it kind of catches your eye, but you're kind of concerned about the um, click on the door, I, I, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Not. But on the other side, just a quick description, looks like it's uh, old, about the same size. A picture of the gauntlet in its heyday. What would you guys like to do? Want to look at the paintings more, or do you want to pursue the click of the door? Um, I'm assuming that uh, Ms. Frost is continuing to ping for magic, in case any of these paintings are weird mm -hmm. um that's i'm, but, I'm uh, default okay. assuming that miss frost's exploration yeah. action is a um <clears throat> all right i'll i'll message in kane's head i thought i heard this door click there might be something on the other side of it get ready side note john okay. i would also be yes. pinging as long as there's nothing else that needs to be done if, if all we're doing is exploring i'd Are also you doing be your light this way or no you're no nope, you i have my put your thing yep. right Yep, I have my thingy in my backpack, so I'd be peeking um, as well. Um, if you turn back and look back at Abed, the way he's got that ever-burning torch stuck in his backpack, and the way it kind of hits his hood, he looks a little like um, Hades. <laughs> <laughs> the flames <laughs> are coming up off it. <laughs> You, and you and for as long as you've known him, you also think he'd really pretty much dig looking like that. Like he's mm -hmm. pretty creepy and badass. I kind of want to look like that now. So both both Abed and crew have bulges sticking out of their packs. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, one's one's lit up at the end. And Abed is burning. <laughs> I have a glowing. Sounds bulge. like a personal problem, Abed. You should get that looked at. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not until you give it to someone else. Oof. That sounds Oof. like their problem. <laughs> that sounds like a you problem now. Uh, oh. All right. I'll uh I'll yeah, I'll check the door for traps <laughs> and see if it's locked. Okay. I can't do it twice in a row, I'm sure. Uh it's only a fourteen, but You are pretty sure this is not trapped. I'm pretty sure this is not trapped. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, is it unlocked? Do you try I'll, the handle? I will I will try the handle to see if it's unlocked. Cause it's unlocked. My, my, okay, my goal is that I'm going to slowly turn the knob and then quickly open the doors to surprise whatever's on the other side. So as you slowly turn the knob, you hear a click. And you realize it's open. You slam it open. <laughs> And there's a glowing light in front of you. Hmm. And it, and this little voice out of nowhere goes, I am Spooky Wisp. You have come to my sanctum. In front of you, there's like an office. <laughs> and this glowing light... It's like floating in the middle of the office, but there's a small hallway before you get there. Uh, there are two doors to your right, and there's paperwork and 
all kinds of stuff laying out strewn about the floor and uh yeah uh, the, there's several bookshelves a couple of chairs um but like yeah there's paper and books open and strewn all over the floor um yeah Mm. and what did it said I am spooky Spooky wisp spooky Um, wisp and you have entered my domain um it's it's just floating around in circles or it's just kind of floating floating around or around over the desk and the chairs and stuff down the hallway from you you see it floating kind of around in a circle. Well, I will, uh, I don't know, I guess it's too late to avert my eyes because the last one tried to get us to go swimming. Um, I, will allow you, I will allow you through my domain if you get me the shiny. You come from the shiny. Bring me the shiny. Uh... Does it seem okay. like it's a solid, or does it seem like it's like a, 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 like, can we see through it? It seems a lot to you. Like, you can cast Dancing Lights, right? Yeah. Uh, it seems a lot I, like Dancing I Lights know. to you. Um, I, actually, I don't think I can. Uh, my, my, my question Nick, is... Nick and Arcana, check. I'll <laughs> I was going to say, my question <laughs> is, if I cast Mage Hand, can I capture it? You can certainly try. 27. Yeah, this is Dancing Lights. You know this is Dancing Lights. Someone has cast Dancing Lights. And so, instead of... We have one of the Wizard of Oz around somewhere playing a game with us. Mm. Someone is Spooky Wisp. I'm going to, I'm going to message... Okay. I'm going to attempt to message Genius. Message. Okay. And okay. say, this is Dancing Lights. Be aware somebody is here. And I'm messaging him because he is front. Message. Oh, okay. I'll respond with, who's this talking? I'm in my basement playing D&D right now. What? What? What's D&D? Oh, oh, you're messaging crew. Yeah, I'm messaging crew. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I would, I, I would, uh, I would walk up to the lady and just whisper that to her. Be like, "Hey, it's dancing lights." Mm, so I will immediately <laughs> then start looking for a caster. You start looking around. Uh, make a perception check. I'm currently frozen right now, so. Uh, ooh. That's a powerful Let magic. Go. I know. I, I genius am frozen right now. Crew is ready to make a perception check. Um, here, I think I can do it on my phone. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you want me to roll for you? Oh, all of a sudden it pops back up as soon as I go for my phone. Uh, I'll assume this isn't to find traps, so it's just uh, six. Uh, uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah, you don't see anything. Yeah. Are you moving Don't into see. the area? You see the dancing lights before you. Oh, there we go. So there's a desk, right? Yeah. 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 There's a desk and a couple of chairs that are overturned. And... The desk, like, solid facing us, and, like, there could be somebody hiding under it? Possibly. Mm. In fact, you, you, you kind of look and you look carefully and. There's a small set of bare feet with three toes on each foot that you can see under there. Like baby-sized feet. Mm-hmm. He just nudges crew in the side and points. I will... Uh, how how much space can you see under the desk? Just the toes? You're just yeah, Enough to see these feet, yeah. So, like, I could theoretically grab the feet. Theoretically, yeah. Not really do much with them, but I'll do that. Diggle, 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 diggle. 
I'm just kind of. You grab well, and I have um, gone into this place. Apparently, make make a unarmed attack. <laughs> attack those feet. <laughs> what kind of See show is this? Catch hold of these feet. <laughs> yeah, this show has become very, very strange. What kind of hotel is this? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Um, let me Whoa. come here. I gotta view this quick. Richard, what's you happening? Say. 22 is enough. Um, yeah, he's. You hear suddenly a ah! scream, and you have a hold of these two little feet, and you can tell that whatever you these feet belong to fell over. <clears throat> nice. Do you pull at all? <laughs> uh, I highly doubt that I'm going to be able to pull it out from underneath, but I would. I guess I would try until it looks like it's going to be painful for whatever it is. A little set of legs comes out and a, like, leafy like skirt slash loincloth and suddenly a like it's like the gut of the thing stops it from coming up from underneath the desk. Mm. And suddenly there's a let me go, let me go, no, I, I, let me go. And he's like kicking at you. He can't get free though. I'll I'll let him go and I'll I'll step back. <laughs> he scrambles back up and he kind of steps away. <laughs> I am spooky. This <laughs> 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 thing actually starts swirling. You guys. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you, I'm, you can't see the I'm, feet I'm just, now. I'm just gonna look at Kane and be like, I, I don't know. I, I... Abed's gonna just sigh and push past I'm everyone. Just gonna, like take the side of the table and flip it on its side. You you, you go over to the side of the desk. You flip it on its <laughs> side, and there's a little. He looks like a small elf. With, he's got like pointy ears and this like blonde, matted, tangled, curly hair with leaves and sticks and twigs stuck in, and his eyes are blacked out. And he's shirtless, but he's got this like leaf necklace thing that's got multicolored leaves hanging on it. And he's got this little gut that just hangs out that leads down to like this leafy, uh, like almost skirt. And he's pointing this wand at you. <laughs> He's like, stay back! I know that you can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I will let you go if you give me the shiny. Can I do like an pointing ins- a wand at him? An insight, <laughs> not a good idea. An insight check or like a arcana check to see if I if I if I think he actually does know magic. You can make an insight check to see if you think he knows magic. Uh, no, any of you can make a uh, knowledge nature check to to know what he is. <laughs> Is this a uh, a exclusive to Galarian type thing? Uh, your your nature check's gonna be a little more difficult, but you'd still be okay. able to figure it out. Uh, fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Twenty three on my nature check. Oh, oh you know exactly what this is, and it would make sense that you know what this is. This is a brownie. <laughs> Somebody big mm. brownie. He's about, a, he's about a he's about a foot tall, <laughs> and he's got some sort of stick. If you're looking closer at it, it's a wand of some kind. Um, this does ping to you. Like, when you entered the room, there was a light ping. So the wand does ping for you. Um, I got a 28 on my arcana. He absolutely does not know magic. He has a wand <laughs> that he doesn't know how to operate. <laughs> Can I use Mage Hand to grab it from him? got it to work once. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, cast mage hand. All right, I'm gonna cast mage hand and uh, what I what I do with attack with it? Disarm, probably. It's an athletic yeah. check against the reflex DC. Yeah, disarm. Use your spell um, DC level for your modifier. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um. Uh, he jumps back and whips the wand away and he 
points. No, my magic. <laughs> my magic. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like pointing at the hand as he's like backing up. <laughs> so uh, would Lady Phil know whether or not this is a threat to us or anyone else know? I mean, he, he doesn't seem he that does not seem dangerous. like a threat at all. I want that wand. Kane is, Kane is going to scold, is going to basically give him the intimidating glare, scolding him. I think you need to put the wand down. Uh, make an intimidation check. 18. Uh, let's see. He needs a will save. Doesn't he? Uh, uh, hey. Kind of, he looks at you and he like <laughs> and he doesn't just sit it down, he kind of walks over to you, like, tentatively, <laughs> and sets it at your feet, and he kind of takes two steps back, and he puts his hands behind his back, he, I just wanted the shiny! I kick, I kick the wand back in Lady Miss, Mrs. Frost's direction. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll pick it up, but I'll hand it to Abed, and ask him... Do you know what this is? Because it uh, looks like he is very skilled at identifying things. I would use my that's, that's new strange. my new skill to identify that item. What what is the and you said it, it only takes a minute then now, right? right? A minute then? Said? Yeah, it's uh Okay. So you started identifying it. Um what do you what do the three of you do in the minute? I was, was going to ask him, what shiny is he looking for? What's it look like? Besides shiny the fact that it's shiny. A room. It's long. It's a, it's a tube, and it's got gems on it, and it's really shiny. You'll know when you see it. What do you plan to do with this thing? It's a shiny. I keep it. I want the shiny. Hey, sugar, do you have any <clears throat> other shinies? I'd love to look through them. Maybe we could make a trade. Um... There's, um, I have another shiny, yes. Oh, uh, can, can we see it? Uh, I, mm, 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 uh, make a, um, diplomacy check. Or persuasion check. It is poor. <laughs> um... <laughs> Use your, use your hero point to redo it. Yeah, point. You can okay, point. all right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was the other thing you said to use? Maybe my bonus is higher. Um, persuasion. Persuasion. Is, is that a thing? No, it is. All right, I will what continue to use diplomacy. diplomacy. And I will yeah. use a hero point for my diplomacy and try again. <clears throat> 14? 14. Ah. I can show you the shiny. Well, I think that's best. We we might be able to help you keep it safe. Um. Okay. Um. I uh uh uh. Mm, if you bring me the 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 other shiny, I I can I can tell you, I have information for trade. Well, but first, other shiny, as show of faith, faith. A show of good good luck. <clears throat> and he looks confused. <laughs> and he, he goes running off down the hall to that first door, um, the door on the right. And he opens it up. And inside that room, there is a bunch of, like, wood and supplies and stuff for, like, rebuilding fences and roofs. And um, it's like a storage shed for repairs. And he starts rooting around in it, and he flips a couple of boards over, takes a rock, a couple of rocks off, and then he pulls this one board up, and there's a hole. And in the hole, it's a dirt hole, maybe about a foot, man, not even a foot deep, maybe about, maybe about two, three inches deep. And he reaches, and he turns around, and he holds up a key. Shiny. <laughs> it's uh, a large silver key. It, it sticks out of both sides of his hand. Wow, you're right. That that key does look uh, very shiny and pretty. 
Uh, he looks what very is proud it? of himself. Do you know what it opens up? Have you tried? Nope. Oh, he's unlocked doors. I'm sure you knew that, but I'm surprised you haven't checked around this place. It's a shiny. He hasn't gone through two doors where the shiny thing was, so he's been here There's... a while. There is a, there is a thing protecting the shiny. <laughs> it does not like me. Oh, you mean that anybody. bird? Oh yeah, yeah, that bird was that bird was a mean little devil. I, I'm gonna well, look up from the wand and say, "Shocking." Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we had to put that bird down. It was too dangerous. He takes off at a dead sprint towards the double doors. <laughs> Anyone grab it? I, I think. Let's see, me or Abed are the only two that will be able to grab. Probably, him. and Abed's a little I'm busy. Do you I, try and grab him? I have Mage Hand I, still going. Can I Mage Hand him? If he, since he's so small. Your mage, your mage Hand is twenty feet away in the other room. Oh yeah. Right. And you're preoccupied, mind wise. I guess I'll try to grab him then. I'm not. Uh, go ahead and make a yeah. athletics or acrobatics check. Up to you. Not much for clothes to grab onto, so uh, no. good luck. Yeah, some you grab the fig leaf, you know? Yeah, I was going to say grab by his leaves. <laughs> <laughs> 23! 23! Grab <laughs> um, him by the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally kind of what you do. You grab him, and you, you, you get him by the hair. Turn around, and he's like, set him down, and so he, he keeps running. He puts both his hands on your hand. He's like, no, I need the shiny, and his feet are still going. <laughs> He's trying to get through the, the shiny, the shiny, and <laughs> pick him up, and his feet are still going Kane, in there. Kane is immensely <laughs> amused by the fact that crew has the shiny and is just is unwilling to <laughs> even acknowledge it at this point. I'm gonna straight up hold this brownie right up. Uh, well, let's see. <laughs> he stops his he stops his feet moving eventually when he realizes he isn't getting anywhere. And then he, turns, he kind of tries to turn and look at you. Do you turn him to look? Because you kind of had him as he was running away from... Do you pick him up to look at him at all? Or yeah. Do you, yeah? Uh, yeah, I'm going to... As you yeah, turn him I'll, around... We'll just stops. turn him around and have him look. Yeah. He, stops, he gets, gets a little sheepish and holds the key out again. You take shiny? I yeah. get big shiny? That's, we want the little shiny, but... Uh, we can't give you the big shiny, so I'll, I'm going to snatch the key from the little from the little thing. Uh, make a strength check. <laughs> Where's the strength? Well, that's not mm. great. <laughs> it, it, it shouldn't be too hard, honestly. Okay. <laughs> Nat one. <laughs> this is when they're the <laughs> That's one roll. That's what you roll. How do I roll a strength check? Uh, just take your strength, roll the die, and add your strength modifier. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's a thing. Yeah, for whatever reason, they didn't put buttons. I don't think. On those? No, yeah. they did All not. Right, well, it's 16 because I have a zero strength modifier. So it's 16. a 16? Yeah, he rolled a negative one. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled okay. a one, and he's got a minus two. <laughs> so... All right. Well, I snatched the silver key. Yep, and I right say, on the I it's... say, you're too small for that spyglass, son. This is not fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, life is not very often fair, especially for one as small as you. But, I want the shiny. <laughs> but I'll tell you what: Jamie. if you go and but... you, if you go and you leave us alone. I'll tell you, we'll leave with your britches intact. I'll tell you that. Otherwise, you're in trouble. I will go back to my domain. I have information, though. And he looks really smug at that moment. All right, well, then I'm going to turn him towards Kane and say, you better tell Kane what that information is. He gets very angry. You better tell Big what Daddy Kane. Gonna... What's he going to do? Kill? He kill you, no get information. I get the shiny. He smiles, realizing he's come up with a foolproof. He looks at him and says, I won't kill. I will just 
start plucking whatever his hair stuff is. Hair gets caught in stuff all the time. Leaves, hair, whatever he has hanging from him. Abed <laughs> would like to say... Easy. Enough. Give Shiny, I give information. Okay. Alright, can I, uh, can I pull out... I have five silver. Can I pull out the five silver? And hold him out in front of him. <laughs> and be like... You're the this... clinking. Is, is this worth you the information? Five shinies? Yeah. That one's real shiny. That one's not so shiny. But that one's real shiny. Genius, you literally... Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to do. Is be yeah. like annoyed yeah. and just give throw silver at him to like, get him to talk. I know. I have I an idea you... of how much that spyglass is worth. And five silver is totally worth I give the you... trade. I give... I give you three information for five shiny. Yeah. Okay. We'll see yeah. how good this information is. Ah, uh, shiny first. I'll give him one. <laughs> His hands go like this. I'll give him one, one and I'll and I'll have the other ones like ready to hold, and then I'll I'll hold it out in front of me like I'm gonna give it to him, and I'll look at him expectantly. I'm not gonna win a staring contest with a brownie, am I? Ah. Uh, this building, this where we're at, is belong to Volek Azrene. A Z R I N A E. And then it's V O L L U K. Volek Azrene. Ha! All right, I'll give him another. I'll give him another. <laughs> another hand. I'll give him two more. Two of the two more, so then he'll have three. Oh. Whoa. Next piece of it. Volok work for Bellacora. Volok mean. Bellacora really mean. I assume she was the lady in red that we saw. Yeah, picture. Picture. Yeah. Bellacora. Lady of Is Volok the other picture that is no longer there? He shrugs. <laughs> I don't know. Destroyed one got here. All right. I will give him the other two silver then. And He, he looks at both his that. hands. <laughs> ah. <laughs> He's not going to be able to tell you anything with coins <laughs> in his mouth. <laughs> he looks down at his loincloth. Cheek like a squirrel. He sticks one of his fingers in his loincloth and kind of pulls it out. <laughs> Yeah, I'll put him there then. <laughs> he lets it snap shut. <laughs> and there's a, there's you're, a, you're, there's you're a little jingle. The, um, a little... I was going to say, does he shake his ass so it jingles? Mm. Yep, not his ass, his front. He just kind of wiggles his junk. <laughs> <laughs> Once he realizes it's jingling, he's like, oh, that's cold. Quite <sighs> the coin purse. Lighthouse. Shoot laser ghosts at people. Picture. <laughs> mm. Okay, I go back to my domain. Put me down. Down? Right. Did you sna you snatch the key already? Yeah, he I doesn't know. have a hand. Yeah, he's got the key. He doesn't have a hand to hold anything. He's got one one silver in one hand, two silver in the other hand, and three silver <laughs> in his loincloth. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I don't know unless you think he's got more information. Is that all you know? That's three informations. All right, all that's our deal. Now yeah. you stop. You stop anybody from coming through with those scary, scary lights of yours. I, 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 I need, I need my stick to make oh. lights. And oh, about you... this time, about this time, Ada looks up and goes, "Oh yeah, this is a wand of dancing lights." <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, I that bet. makes sense. Do, do we need that wand, Abed? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, I'm sure it'll come in I handy. Mean, I will add it to right. my. Well, you're not you're not gonna get the stick back then, son. So uh, 
just uh, mm. you know, make your spooky ass noises, and I'm sure that'll work just fine. He he, he looks. He's got the one coin. And he looks at the other two coins. <laughs> he shakes his butt again, so it jingles. And, okay. I make yeah. spooky. I make sounds like big spooky guy. He got the chains that go. Ksh, ksh, ksh. I do that with coins. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, can I, look at, uh, I look at Kula and quietly say, I wonder if he realizes jingling coins might draw more attention and not scare people away. Mm, that's not, not our problem. <laughs> Down? Can Lady still go into that room with the hardware and stuff and just make sure there's nothing else in there. Yeah. Um, do you set him down at all or do you carry him with you? Oh, he, I'm going to put him down. Okay. He, he goes back. Um, he goes back and he goes over by the desk and you hear him yell, ah, big guy. Um, um, can make desk right, please? <laughs> please? <laughs> One more information. Scary voice, no help if, if I, I seen. Give us one more piece of information and I'll put your desk right. Ah, uh, 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 information. Ah, uh, one more information. Stairs, stairs, stairs. And he, he goes running. He goes running, and he um, he's still got coins in both his hands. And he gets to that second door, and he uh, he um, looks at both the coins. Puts them all in one hand. He's struggling to hold all three of them in one hand. He grabs his blank cloth and drops them in there. <laughs> he jumps up twice, and his, the coins are, like, jangling along. And He jumps up, he finally catches it, and does one of these and opens the door, and the other door le- has a spiral staircase leading down. Would Information. Down no. no. It's not okay. my domain. I, I, I just... Give the desk a little shove so it falls using all of its weight. I don't know if it'll break or not, but whatever. <laughs> you, you shove it and, it, and it kind of slides and pops up a little bit. And then kind of collapses. Half, uh, like, one side collapses, so now it's, like, angled like it's broken. And he looks at it for a minute. He goes, even better. Looks like rest of the room now. <laughs> and he runs around and he climbs underneath it. And then you can hear... Um, from the other side of it, like he's run around and gotten in the little alcove underneath it, and you can hear like poker, like coins being like shuffled, like poker chips, like he's playing with the <laughs> coins. Shiny. Mm. Uh, searching through that room, you find more wood and bricks, and um, there are a few panes of glass in there that seem that they were shattered at one point, um, but there's nothing else of value there. So do we want to go down the stairs here, or do we want to go back and explore the rest of the first floor that we have not looked at yet? Up to you. Uh, I would. I would hate to leave. Uh, it would make. I would hate to have missed something. It would make the most sense yeah. if we made sure that this area was clear before heading back in. I mean, I guess I would say let's take the stairs, filters. right? It's either separate or it's connected to the basement of the other area. And then we're still exploring the other area. We, so we still had a uh, couple of rooms we didn't go in. The, the rooms with the blue doors. I just, this is an island, right? So it's pretty unlikely that this basement leads to the, main. the other building. I don't know. The water, the, like the, water the water didn't seem like it was very. The water didn't seem like it was very deep, right? I think you had said it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Well, we will never know unless we check. I think we should go down this set of stairs right here. Well, we have a map, don't we, for the first yeah. floor? Or something? Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Do, do you get where's it? Where's that next next map? Uh, while they're doing that, can I see if I can? unjam this door is it just stuck or is there something behind it um it's locked oh can i unlock it oh uh, yeah you can unlock it from this side uh, i would unlock it 
Yeah, I'll pull out the map and uh you hear a tense little <laughs> from underneath the desk when you unlock it. <laughs> and I try is, is there a keyhole? Is is that silver key this door? That would suck. No. Okay. So, pulling out the maps, Abed, uh, you realize that these stairs lead down to a small 15-foot-long uh, hallway um, with a room on several rooms on the east side, or on the west side, and one larger room on the east side. I think the, the biggest question is, does it look like this is would be connected to the other... No, like the this main looks, building. No, this looks like its own basement for some reason. Mm. Then we should go look at it. The way Lady Frost yeah. recommended. And there is a staircase in this basement too that you see. Yes. Yeah. Another staircase is only leading further down. Leading further down to a third floor. It seems. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you have there are with the hallway you have uh, one, two, three rooms to the east and one room to the or three rooms to the west, one room to the east and off of one of the rooms to the west is a staircase leading down to a third floor I think we gotta check it out yeah okay we're gonna fear mind a little bit of this because this is where I was unprepared <laughs> <laughs> We got about ten minutes of it. Yeah. yeah. If we want, we can we can use this ten minutes to run back real quick and check those other rooms. I mean, they're just we unlock the door so we can get over there. So we can prep for that DM. Yeah, I'm ready for anything on this level. All right, let's go back there. Let's see if we have some. Okay. I mean, it does make sense that we can there's clear out those rooms. The uh, the door into there's a door to the outside. Yeah, where Kane just moved to. Is th is that a door or a window? I assume it's a door. That is a window. Is it on the first floor? Yeah. You can see it's like a, it's seeing through it. There's nothing to like, there's no light coming from the other side of it. It is a dark window and it's um, kind of frosted. <laughs> Hard to see. You break it. Break it? <laughs> you shatter it. Um, like, Cruz got his face right up by the window, like, okay, how am I going to open this thing? And all of a sudden. Boom! Right above you, it shatters. I can pull this other map back up. Let's see. That is. Thanks, Kane. Okay. What you see. It looked like anything in there. When you shatter this window, the moonlight pouring into this room uh, reveals smooth walls in a circular room that are a light gray. Um. And in the middle of the floor, you recognize a in it almost built in. <laughs> it looks like there's a puddle of blood on the floor. And rising out of the blood is a figure with a very familiar face that you just saw. Uh, it's almost as if this figure is built out of the blood, but it is very clearly Bella Cora. Oh, I was going to say, is it the brownie? <laughs> <laughs> I am spooky with the bloody style. <laughs> Suddenly he's very powerful. That wand was more than big. <laughs> that little bastard no. tricked us. So this, is this like a monument to Bella Cora or is this? Like... Uh, the, the edges of this ripple and it turns. And it looks at you. Cool. Uh, when it looks at you. Oh. No, it just turns and looks at you. <laughs> That's all it does. It turns you and looks turn at you. to stone. When it looks at you, it just turns blood and puddle, looks at the you. The blood puddle is looking at us. I don't know if we should go in this room. It's kind of, mm. kind of weird. Puddle of blood is looking at you, yes. Puddle of blood. I yeah. used to pay play base for them. I was gonna say the best <laughs> puddle of mud cover band ever. It's the, it's the thrash the metal version. It's the absolute puddle of blood. Yeah. <laughs> the thrash metal version of puddle of mud. Mm. Oh. Uh, so the window would 
Kupta. Uh, <laughs> do, do, do we want to go in the room and see uh, what the little blood's all about? Uh, is, is a cane able, would Kane be able to get through the window? Uh, I think he's the biggest. It's yeah, Kane would, Kane would fit through. Okay. All right. Uh, do we want Abed or Ms. Frost <laughs> to take a look and maybe uh, Any see if it, think see if it's anything? magical? Uh, do you think it's not magical? I assume it is, but let's make sure. Okay. Okay. We'll wave them over. It is definitely magical as it pings. Oh, you got me on um, that. I'm going to... I, I really want to see what's in the chat now. Miss uh, Miss Frost, would you like to do anything besides just ping it? Yeah, just ping, ping it. There's nothing else I'm, I'm doing with a puddle of blood. Uh, it's <laughs> definitely, yes, it's magic. It's necromantic magic. Feels, does it feel safe? Should I'm just looking up your alley. Do, do you know anything about this kind of magic? Feels kind of hostile. Uh, I, I would, um, have to go inside. I'm actually, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell him I would have to go inside and look at it to identify it. I think make a religion check, both, the, um, Lady Frost and, um, Abed. 13. A very good religion. So I'm at a 24. Um, Looking at this, uh, you realize this is a, um, it is a haunt. It is a, a, a residual magical component of a severe um, occurrence. Uh, you can disable this by cleaning enough of the blood away that it wouldn't be able to form itself. Like prestidigitation or like mop and bucket? <laughs> I How have prestidigitation. I wouldn't mind trying to like just scatter it a little bit so it doesn't have as much power. How much uh, How much does prestidigitation clean in a casting. It says uh, I can clean or soil uh, an object of light, bulk, or less. Uh, affect an object of one bulk with ten rounds of concentration. So with ten minute. rounds of concentration. So you'd need a full minute. It's, it's, a, it's more blood than one bulk <laughs> laying on the floor here. <clears throat> Mm. Does anyone know Tidal Wave? Yeah, I'd have to sustain the spell for 10 minutes, it seems to say. Mm. And that's probably not worth the effort. We could all oh. pee in it. <laughs> Ain't nobody bring Is sawdust that, that you throw on puke? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's what we need is blood mixed with pee. Mm-mm. Well, you might as well get all the bodies. I can, go, I can in go in first, guys, to see what it's like, but you guys got to back me up. Got it. I'm going to do the, yeah, we got you, buddy. Are you going in first, Kane? Yeah, I guess I'm going in first. Okay, so stop right inside, right yep. there. The second yeah, you step one. foot on the floor, I need a <laughs> fortitude save from you. Fortitude. As she turns directly, looks at you, and starts to inhale. 24. 24. Um, let's see. Where is the... Okay. So that is a success. You take... No. Eight okay, points of negative damage. Eight points of negative damage. Yeah. As she starts... Um... Oh, actually, nope, 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 nope. Back that up. Okay. Um, Back up the blood train. Success. Nope. Yep. It's not eight points of negative damage. I got to reroll. It's a different die. <clears throat> and it's a different type. Nine Five points. points 
of persistent bleed damage. Shit. And we'll put us in initiative here. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. <laughs> For it. <clears throat> See what room is this? It's this. Something tells me we don't want to be in that room. We have to figure out, find out what's in here. There's a different room. We could go to the other one first. There's a set of stairs to your left leading up to a trap door. Kane? That's exactly what okay. we want. <laughs> Just so you know, as you look around, it's the only feature in this room besides the pale gray walls and the blood on the floor that is <clears throat> sucking your blood out. <laughs> Abed, what's your initiative? 16. All right, crew. Dirty 20. Uh, Kane? Natural 20 for 26. Good choice. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize uh, we could choose what our initiative so? was. <laughs> um, I've got a 24. 24, hot damn. And then this thing is going to... Where's my d20? Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, where's its perception? Oh, it rolls off of that. <laughs> All right, so Kane, this thing has pulled on your life blood. <laughs> like, it's a little disturbing as you, like, out of your pores, <laughs> you, you notice droplets of blood start seeping out and adding to the pile of blood in the middle. You gross. All right, well, <laughs> I can't. I, I don't have any way to clean the blood, so we're going to splash it around the room. <laughs> mm. So you're just going right. to start jumping in it like a two-year-old? He is, Ooh, yeah, like, he's going to nail it with the hammer and let it fly. 19 to hit. <laughs> yes. Eight bludgeoning. Eight bludgeoning damage. The You swing over the top, you hit it, and it kind of goes... And like spreads out, and then everything kind of pulls back towards it, and oh. it stands upright and looks at you again. I was gonna say, was there splash damage? Uh -huh. It splashed, but it kind of mm. pulled itself back to back together. It didn't seem to do anything. See what you did there, though. I liked it. Well, that makes this a lot more difficult. <clears throat> I'm not uh, lady, lady Sill, understanding it's a haunt and seeing uh, Jacob, seeing Kane do this, um, you know you aren't going to be able to destroy it. Like, physically. You have to correct whatever caused it. And in this case, you're assuming cleaning up the blood somehow will... Somehow removing the blood from the scene will clear the haunt. Kane is going to back out of the room. <laughs> you can't do anything about this. You see uh -oh. just like seeping down his chest, just like rivulets of blood. That's all I can do. At the end of your turn, a few more of those droplets of blood like kind of pop off of you and swirl around the corner and add to the pile. I take damage then from... Persistent bleeding? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, are, you, are you not safe from it, even though you're out of the room now? Oof. Eight. Oh. Points of bleed damage. Eight points of bleed damage. <laughs> and you are... really not doing too well right now. Just saying. Mm. Feeling a little woozy over here. Hmm. Mysteriously, the the like blood on Kane's chest has like what was there went away, and no, he hasn't bled any new blood. <laughs> Miss Frost. <laughs> Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. So, Miss Frost is gonna say. The only way this will go away is if we clean up this disaster. 
um, that the uh, the blood pool that that uh, is enchanted in this way. And uh, I'm going to try something. I don't know if, like, fire damage will dissipate it. But I'm going to try to use my moonbeam. Um, otherwise, we, like, mop and bucket time or grabbing some water from the lake. So I mentioned if anyone has a container, lake water may help. Or uh, stream water may help. But I am going to try to do Moonbeam just to see if fire does anything to it. Okay. Mm. And we hire some cleaners from town to come and clean this up. <laughs> as long as they have more than eight hit points. I don't think they can get close enough to it before they would perish. Yeah, so I only have a nine to attack anyway. Yep. So. Misses. And uh, I'm not moving any closer, but I'm not going to back too far away because I need to be able to see it yet. So I'm going to stay right there. Crew. Well, Crew saw what happened to Kane, and he is not excited about going in there. Uh, I guess I'm just going to uh, delay my turn until I have better information. <laughs> crew stands still um, all I have is a water skin and that's not going to be enough Abed so Abed I'm going to go to the window and shoot Ray of Frost my goal is to freeze the blood okay uh, twenty to hit yep and do you, I mean, do I need to roll damage or how do you want? Um, your goal was to freeze it. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah. Seven. 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 Cold. The top part of it, the, the, the face, the head part of it is it freezes in this awful scowl. Um, you don't think it's frozen solid or permanently, but it's frozen for a short time and we'll stop there. Ooh, okay. I still have, have a yeah. short, you have a short amount of time to deal with. Oh, shit. So, All right. We'll start there next session. I mean, there's a there's a boat that we could theoretically uh, haul water in, but I'm on a boat. I think... <laughs> I'm on a boat. I got my flippy flappy. <laughs> <clears throat> I hope there's a good drain in the floor. We can dump a boat through the water in there. I, I'm right. guessing there's no drain if the blood didn't go away. No. Might just be plugged. We, just gotta un we gotta unplug the drain and it'll go away. Oh, uh, yeah. Anybody got a rake? <laughs> or plunger? <laughs> <laughs> that looked bad. That sounded bad. Sounded. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, good stuff. I don't even know what to do with that information. There's so much information <laughs> that I read oh, and shit. heard today that just. <laughs> yeah, you need to look at chat. Actually, you'll see you'll see Kupta's title. It'll it'll be fine. Oh, uh, let's see. I need to do this though before we get get too far out of things here. Um, uh, where, where is it? Give me this one. So let's see. We did. We got a nineteen, which is that, and. Don't yeah, forget, we've cool. got the Wand of Dancing Lights from the Brownie. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to need some information about that because there's no there Wand go. of Dancing Lights in the inventory. Four, so, 40 the, experience. The ones I was looking at. Uh, the ones four, are zero. all generic. Zero. And they just hold a spell. I think you might have to either four, type in the zero. spell or. Um, but 40. the ones are generic. So. Um, 
I don't remember if it's just wand or if it was uh, if it had a specific thing. But yeah, there there aren't wands of things for the most part. They're just uh, generic, and you have to look up the spell to to <clears throat> cast it. Yeah, that's kind of what I was. Because I think was I reading it correctly? You have to know the spell to use the spell, kind of a thing. I don't know. Oh, that I would won't be have to worry about it. Because if you know the spell, then you wouldn't need the wand. Well, it would well, save you, you, you avoid slot. using the spell slot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Depending but on the spell. But the little, the little thingy couldn't have been using it if he went to know the spell. So yeah. It must be embedded in the wand somehow. Yep. Well, I mean, NPC rules may be different from player rules. That doesn't seem fair. <laughs> and Dancing Lights <laughs> is probably a cantrip. But... Mm -hmm. So. I would assume. Interesting. All right. All right. You... You, know, you gotta take us out. Oh or... yeah, I was looking at something in chat. I was like, oh wait, uh, what the hell? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we are two nerds in quest. We are here Sunday mornings, eight thirty a.m. Central Time. We are doing Pathfinder, and we love it. Twitch.tv forward slash Tom M Norm T O M M N O R M. Uh, let other people know about the show. Um, if you're enjoying it, have people come here, watch us, interact with us, love us, give us great big hugs and kisses in chat. That's awkward. Don't do that. Do it. Uh, we are here next week. We don't. Uh, we're we're good. Genius, you're not. You're done with up north. Yep. All right. Yep. We're good. So we should be. For the foreseeable future, we should be good to go. We are getting into that. That like this is the prime spot, man. From yeah. right now until like Thanksgiving. Yep. This is when we play. <laughs> I mean, and then yeah. after Christmas, till up north starts. <laughs> until about mm -hmm. April. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. Two two spots where we really don't have to worry much about people being missing. Hop in yeah, our Discord, definitely. talk to us about music, movies, games, Pathfinder, D&D, &D, whatever, video games. We're playing Baldur's Gate 3 right now, and uh, John has been playing... What's the other game you were playing? Were you playing Starfield? Starfinder. Starfinder. Oh, I've been Starfield. playing all kinds of shit. Yeah. So pop Starfield, in our Discord. Apex. I'm on Mortal Deep Kombat 1. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 1? How's that? It's uh, not ideal for the Switch, but it's really fun. I heard it's janky as really shit. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's fine most of the time, but when it's bad, like, the sound completely goes away. Or, yeah. like, a character animation is completely blurred up. But, uh, yep. but most so, of the time, it runs fine. Go to our Discord, bit.ly forward slash our fun Discord. Join us there, talk about shit, and uh, we will talk with you about shit. That's it. That's Coo -coo. my statement. Let's talk shit. I like to talk about shit. Yep. Thank you, Brown. I don't have a lot more to say about it. And on that note, for me, for Rick, Grainy. for Cooch, for Genius, it's everywhere. for JC, <laughs> peace out, bitches. Go Brewers. Go Pack, go.